There was all these kind of things flying about there at the time, and I, used to, I took it with a pinch of salt, you know. But um, a couple of years later, I was driving. Um, <coughs> I was driving across Canada with my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and uh, uh, we hadn't met long. And um, she said, "Well, I'd like to hear you, you know, your band." So we bought a copy of Number of the Beast. I actually went in and bought one, and we were playing it. And she said, oh, "This is all right." And so and then we stopped off at this little village. It's the middle of nowhere in the middle of Canada, and uh, it was very eerie, this village. And uh, I remember there was scores of dogs in the street, and they weren't barking. They were just kind of looking at us. And um, we went into a shop, and we bought some stuff in the shop, and um, in the back of the shop was a fortune teller, spiritualist. And it was kind of a very weird vibe. And we got the bill for the uh, the stuff we bought in the shop, and it was $66.06. <laughs> And that was very strange. We kind of didn't say anything, got in the car and drove the hell out of there, you know. It was a Chicago Free Fest or something like that. And um, we were, uh, um, this festival, you know, the, the set up the equipment was pretty naff. And it was like freezing cold, you know. So we thought I'd have a couple of brandies before we went on stage, you know, I mean, and a few of the guys. And uh, as I said earlier, we'd never drink before we go on normally. But this is like a one-off thing. And we thought, all right, let's, let's go for it. So we were, you know, had a few drinks, drinking a few more throughout the gig. And the sound was actually pretty, like, horrendous. And um, so at the end of the gig, some of the monitors started to get, you know, booted off stage. You know, drums were getting trashed. So I thought, I'll have some. So I grabbed my guitar, started trashing it. And I, and I actually you know, threw it out in the audience, you know, like, right, that was it, end of, you know, it's an old guitar, you know, crash, end of the show, great, you know. And I came off and then, like, Tony Wiggins, um, to a manager, come up and said, um, no, that guitar you threw out on stage, you know, off the stage, went, yeah, he said, well, uh, he hit someone on the head and, like, knocked him out. <laughs> and, uh, in fact, it was a policeman, believe it or not, it was actually a policeman. In fact, it was Police Constable Murray, we actually shared the same surname. But so it knocked him out, so they'd come in backstage and stuff, and um, said, well, how, you know, how is he and everything? And he said, well, he just looks, you know, hopefully he'll be coming to in the next few minutes. So, but actually, he came, he came around anyway, right, and, um, and he was very pleasant. I mean, he was a fan of the bands and stuff and everything. So we, like, we gave him, we gave him um, you know, some swag, you know, <laughs> across his palm with some gold. And, um, and then and he was fine about it, because I thought, right, um, you know, is he going to... You know, is he going to like arrest me or take me to court? You know, I thought like wielding a guitar with intent or wielding an axe with intent or something like that. You know, so uh, but we actually we got um, <clears throat> actually he was quite pleasant about it. You know, but um, so no, more, if you're going to throw something out in the audience, make sure it's in <laughs> the small pieces. You know, I distinctly remember being in Swin uh, Switzerland, a place called uh, Winterthur, and it was freezing cold and whatever. And anyway, so the the bus that we're on the coach is broken down and so we're pushing the the, the, the bus you know and we were laughing and joking saying look we've got a number one album and here we are pushing the pushing the bus sort of thing it just seemed, appeared funny to us at the time uh, I, I mean the 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 incident that i recall that was kind of ironic was um uh when we were in somewhere in Switzerland we were in the middle of the tour on Number of the Beast and uh, the bus that we were the tour bus we were in um, had a flat battery and had uh, broken down it sort of expired and we all just had checked out of this little boarding house and got a telegram saying your album has just gone to number one and we went wow the album's number one and five minutes later we were pushing this 30 seat coach up a hill trying to jump start it going oh the album's at number one great right <laughs> like that and i thought that was a, that was a moment i quite enjoyed that was one that was like a nice nice little sort of leveling pause in the whole thing you know most of the team that we brought in then people like dicky bell and Dave Beasley and things there, uh, and actually Doug Hall on the sound. Uh, I mean, a lot of them are still there now. Uh, Dickie Bell, in fact, just retired. They say he's the first uh, tour manager, production manager ever to retire, because uh, most people either die on the road or give up early on.